What's up, Deuterinos? Welcome back to the Game Addicts Podcast. And uh, it's been a minute here. Uh, this is episode 108, or I'm sorry, 180. 180. This is our second attempt at 180. There was another 180 out there that <laughs> is never going to hear uh, the air because we never released it. We got interrupted and we never got back to it. I think uh, I think I still have the file here. And the only reason why we won't release it is because it's like, I don't, one, I don't even remember what we were talking about. And two, I think the stuff that we were talking about was kind of like timely for what was going on in November. I think that's when we were, did, were, were doing that episode. And we were going to talk about like what we were going to talk about today. Um, we're we're going to come back and, I mean, we got FF7 Rebirth around the corner. We're going to touch on that, of course, because we had a demo and we both played it. We got opinions. But, like, why would we go back and, I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe if what we were talking about is good or funny enough, I'll, I I will, in fact, release it as a hidden gem on the YouTubes or something. But, Mike, before we get going, yeah. first bit of news. Uh, this is our first podcast not on Podbean. We have left Podbean. Yes. Our hosting is now with Spotify. Uh, we are on most places. We're spot of we're podcast star like so Spotify, Apple. We're back on there. We're on Amazon, Google. We were uh, it's it's showing the little button there for Google, but I guess Google and YouTube are going to kind of mix. So if we're not on Google, we're, I mean we're definitely on YouTube. Check out Game Matters Podcast. We're there. We're on fire. We're at least we're at least the world's on fire, and we're just sitting here like the dog in the kitchen saying it's fine. Um, but Mike, Mike, Mike. Yes, it's been yes. several months. It has been several months. Since we've actually released an episode, we meant to do something and didn't actually finish it. But since that time, things have changed dramatically. And you have a big change in your world coming, man. Yes. I was I was like sitting here going, man, I think the last last the episode, the unreleased gym had the uh the announcement. So um I don't know yes. if that did or not. I we might have alluded to it, but now it's it's since it's official. Then, it, it is official. It's, it's happening. Like <laughs> there's stuff there. Um, I am officially moving. Um, not just you know down the street over yonder, um, Minnesota. That's uh, about a ten hour drive from where we currently are. It is. It's it's good. It's a big change. It's a good change. It's a big change. Um. I, I've always wanted to live around water, large body of water. And, uh, you know, um, Lake Superior is the largest uh, freshwater lake in the United States. So. <laughs> but uh, it's, we're excited. Yeah. I am very excited to live there. I don't know what else to say. It's a, it's a big change. There's a lot of moving. That's one of the big reasons why we haven't been able to podcast is, you know, You've got tons of stuff going on uh, with, you know, two two children. Mm-hmm. And then I've got the packing every weekend and what? Yeah, man, it is a lot. But thanks to the power of the Internet, we will be able to continue doing the show. And that is the plan. That is the plan is to keep rolling and trucking along and try to get some sort of semblance of periodic release. We might not have that in the weeks coming forward, but especially once he moves and gets settled in, we're going to try and get together about every other week or so. And today's topic, we might fill up our entire time that we have to talk about. There is a few other things oh, it will. on the back burner, uh, but I think we're going to save that for the next time. We, there, there's all this rumors and stuff talking about with Xbox. Are they getting out of the business? Or are they not getting out of the business? Phil's, you actually want to open with that? Uh, get this, it's a quickie. Okay. All right. Um, so, I know. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, we can. Um, I just don't have anything pulled up or anything for that, but we'll just riff on it. So uh, as as of like last week or something, there were some rumors and speculation and leaks or whatever saying that Starfield is coming to PS5 after the first dump of DLC uh, that comes out for that. And then it was like not only that, but also the new Indiana Jones game. Well, those are both published and owned IPs, I guess, in indie is shared with Lucas, but they are going to be put out by the Xbox brand. And then all sort of, then, then it was like the cavalcade of stuff is like, okay, all first party stuff, all everything they own, call of duty and all that stuff. And then like halos and Forza 
all coming to other consoles like PS5, Switch, whatever they can get it on. And it was all the, all this stuff kind of came out like uh, in droves. First, it was a couple, and then it it, it, it it was like the leak from the hose you just couldn't patch. It was like more and more games spilling out onto other consoles. This is crazy. Here's Phil Spencer's tweet on February 5th of mm-hmm. 2024. He said, We're listening and we hear you. We have been planning a business update event for the for next week, which should have been last week. No, uh, if no. it was on the it'd fifth. be this week. It'd be this week. Well, my days are all messed up. Sorry. As we're uh, posting this, it should be this the, this week that we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It says that uh, we're looking forward to sharing more details with you about our vision for the future of Xbox. Stay tuned. And then the announcement, alongside an announcement of Hi-Fi Rush coming to PS5 and the Nintendo Switch, uh, speculation around Hi-Fi Rush, Starfield, and other Xbox games coming to PS5 intensified over the weekend. Oh, and Sea of Thieves now is making a non Xbox platforms is, mm-hmm. is now rumored to be going there. So, yep, and big deal. It is now. Uh, okay, so a couple of things. We a lot of things started coming like to to the question: What are the what what are the plans? What what are the ideas here? You know, Xbox just laid off their entire physical games division, and they pulled all physical games from Walmart. They are gone. There no more no more physical Xbox games are getting sold, and that's a crazy thing to think about. But it's happening. Okay, so then uh, what does that mean? If they're not selling any more physical games, what, like why would they sell a system that like e- easy that one? They're going to come out with a new system that doesn't have a damn disk drive. Like it's they already have the. The S, I guarantee you, they're going to come out with a new version like PlayStation did the PS5 Slim. The new Series X is not going to have a disk drive. They're, they're just not going to do it. Why? If they're pulling it, why would they do it? Now, then, uh, right before all that, Mike, the week before, there was some rumors about PlayStation, about them getting into the handheld market. Not Vita style, but more of a, a Steam Deck style, right? The bigger... Mm-hmm capable it's supposed to be ps4 and ps5 compatible we'll see about that and of course that that is like rumored is that they're in development with that that's many years down the line okay and then it was like what is the future for xbox is it a console are they going to just become a publisher are they going to you know there was a rumor about their own handheld like maybe they'll have a handheld and then a big console will be elsewhere I, who knows but this is the last thing i heard about this was uh, there, Phil had said internally that there are no plans for them to get out of the hardware business. Mm-hmm. That doesn't answer the question, and it, it doesn't mean that it's going to be exact. Uh, the, but what I had heard was is that they're going to have a more powerful Series X style P or uh, offering. It could even be a mid level console where it's like Series X on steroids. And then uh, the lesser skew, instead of doing a digital S, if they're going to have a console that's a little bit lacking, why not make that a Steam Deck style It's like in itself? We don't know, and we're going to supposedly find out this week. And uh, so that's kind of where we're at with it, is that we there's a lot of conjecture. A lot of people have differing opinions. Some people think that they're going the way of Sega. They're not in the position of that, like... Their their parent company is not going bankrupt. It's just that they, as a brand, have never made a single dime for that company, and then that company keeps stacking billions on it to try and have it make company or or make money for the company. So, uh, from the beginning, actually, after the uh, Xbox 360, Microsoft has been looking to abolish the Xbox brand in general. They do not want to make hardware. They are not a hardware company. They are a software company, as they stated multiple multiple times. Phil is the only reason why. We have a, X, a new Series Xbox. Problem is, is that they're not showing numbers. And that's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, with the Game Pass, they're really not making that much money um, off of it like they would hoped to have. Um, a lot of people are now, like uh, me, big for me is I, I, I have no reason to buy an Xbox. Like you, you have, You've given me no reason to buy one. Because you have to make everything accessible to the PC. I love the fact that I can get Xbox games on PC, but it doesn't help your hardware situation mm-hmm. when you allow it. But I'm assuming that this is an assumption, this is not hard evidence or factual at all, that 
uh, Microsoft was kind of like, hey, you need to make a streaming service. This is kind of what we're looking at, and we want it to be on PC. And I think that was the start of the destruction of hardware. I, I think we may see one, one, one more console. I don't think we will. We're going to find out this week, and uh, I will not be surprised to see either Xbox or PlayStation release a Steam Deck-style handheld. It's a market that uh, we've we, you know, we've talked about it. The Switch kind of pioneered it. There there were other ones, but not the the Switch in like got that ball of rolling and made a market for that. And to the point of, hey, did you like the Switch? What if you had that and you can have access to all your Steam library? And it's going to cost it as much as as much as a expensive console, if not more. But you have your entire Steam Deck, you know, Steam library that that's compatible. That's a selling point for PC gamers to have that those worlds mesh especially for oh, yeah. especially for people who travel a lot and uh now you're saying hey if we just beef them up a little bit and ch- we can charge as much as one of our consoles for it we can put out an Xbox or PlayStation style handheld that hey if you have a digital library that you already have bought games from us or Game Pass or PS Now or whatever they're calling it the different tiers of plus and you have you know streaming access or you have you know downloadable access now you have a game library to to fill up a handheld with to take it on the road with you and play so one of the big things is it's like microsoft is a software company that's what they do so they already have the software for one of these handhelds mm-hmm. um obviously they're very close with you know intel and all of them there's no reason why they can't throw like an i7 in one of these consoles, since right now AMD is definitely the market for these new or hybrid hand handhelds, but there's no reason why you can't just say here here it is for 400 bucks, as powerful as the Xbox X Series X S S, not X. <laughs> That'd be well, you know, you're holding a bridge, <laughs> you know. Uh, anywho, <laughs> get that mixed up, but also allow it to say now you have access to all the xbox games you can do your it's like almost like an ipad or some style of that that's more of a console and add touch screen and say you can have all your microsoft stuff on here you can have your steam library on here you can have your xbox library on here everything is compatible with this it's gonna, i think that would be a smart move it's going to be interesting and we're going to find out exactly what they have planned i know that you know, with the rumor of that PS handheld, the rumor was, ah, it might not even come out until the next generation of PlayStation. It comes out, I guess the rumor is PlayStation's already started working on the PS6, and it's going to be beefy when they, and, and they're already asking, you know, uh, developers what they can do and to improve upon the PS5. You know, uh, I guess the PS5 runs a little bit like under the Series X in performance, um, as in in comparison to like the last generation where the PS4 kind of in almost every iteration other than like the One X trumped all of the Xbox offerings, you know, with their versions of the console. So it you know what? We're going to find out exactly what Xbox has planned at this event coming up. Until then we'll just continue to speculate and it'll be a hot topic for the next time that we do get together whenever that's going to be if it's still newsworthy, I guess by that, at that point. But Mike you and I have both played a demo, and this demo came out last week. I told you about it. <clears throat> I was uh, initially slightly apprehensive about touching it, simply because I've seen so much. I'm so excited to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the sequel to the remake. This is part two of the remake trilogy. And I gave in. I gave in to temptation and downloaded the damn near 50 gigabytes of a demo. 48.9 or something like that. Yeah. I downloaded it. I played it this morning. It is a big sucker. And uh, I can't wait to get your thoughts, Mike, because I certainly wasn't disappointed. Oh, no. And it, I came into work the next day and I was hyped. And before I, before I get your opinion, Mike, I said something to you, and, and I kind of want to say it in a little bit of a better in a, a way, like 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 re, like rephrase it. When I when I beat the remake, and 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 got the ending that we got, I didn't dislike it. I had to think about it. I had to think about what they're adding to it and how they're changing things. 
I was not, and by the time we recorded our three hour breakdown of that game, you know, I was excited for where we were going, but I wasn't hyped. I'm now 100% hyped after getting in and getting my hands on what they have done with it. It it's definitely a step forward, even on what they did with remake. And now the floor is yours, Mike. What did you think of the Nibelheim flashback portion of this demo? Okay, so before we start this, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you and not the audience. I have to get my hands right. Um, are we going from beginning to end, or is it just general overview? Because I have a lot going on in here about what's what happened. All right, like just start. Let's go. Like start from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> I love the fact that it's them telling the flashback, but I also like that it's Cloud. I I, I don't know if you saw these little subtle details, but Cloud's eyes and his facial expressions are not Cloud. Now, spoiler mm-hmm. alert for all those that don't know the original at this point. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it. Shame on you. You should play it. Stop what you're doing, play it. Get the story. They have better stuff out that you can get that are better translations of this the older game now. Zach in this iteration of the Nibelheim, Cloud is projecting himself as Zach. And Cloud is the only officer, or he's not even an officer. He's the only infantry soldier that survives the whole entire encounter i the i really enjoyed like the coming back like he goes into the house he goes into tifa's house and she's like you go through my stuff yeah asshole and stuff like that those those were wonderful uh the piano that is super duper hard yeah, yeah. Super, I, I give it two shots, and I was like, no. This is not <laughs> happening. I'm not that coordinated. Oh, man. It, it, it's <laughs> like, only, you know, that's like the easiest one, too. Oh, my God. You know, that's what it's sucks so about hard. it. hard. Dude. It, it, but when you get it right, it sounds so good, and it's very satisfying. But my goodness, is that hard. Do you feel like you got to be like an iguana with your ability to, like, split your eyes and look at different things? Dude, so I ended up, like, my wife was sitting next to me and I was sitting there and I was kind of like giving her commentary about what was happening. So it took me a little bit longer, but it also helps me refresh telling her what's going on. And she's I was like, this is going to be really hard. She's watching. She's like, you're doing kind of good. That's usually like, you're doing really bad, but I don't want to tell you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, excluding that, um, the way Tifa talks to cloud is really what happened mm-hmm. because she was there and she has no idea that he was there it, it it it's the line of you know stuff you shouldn't know and you don't know stuff that you should exactly. and it is confusing the hell out of me and now i just want i want to i want you to tell me what happened because i'm enthralled as to how you know all this detailed information but yet you weren't there so i did this i don't know how you did it but whatever uh, so there's parts where you have a, like, when you go through, uh, you can open up Tifa's um, Amoir, and it's, um, you have a choice of telling them if you did or didn't. Whatever highlighted is what I selected this first time around. So if it said, yes, I went through your stuff, that's what I chose. Um, there's a point where, like, did you go see your mom? No. Or we'll go back to that later. Or move, I was supposed to say move on. I think it says move on. Yeah. So you skip it, you don't go into the house. There are some parts in that towards the end where Cloud's mom, I don't know if you noticed this, she's standing on the steps coming down from the Shinder Mansion. And she says, my son is in there. I need to go back. Let me back. And he goes, mom, that's my mom. And he goes, and he's he's technically saving himself. And it's the small little things mm-hmm. that kind of, you're like, hmm. And then I also like the fact that like a lot of the stuff that Cloud wouldn't have been on is very dark. So it's very hard to see some of the things, and it's very blurry and obscured. 
There's a lot. There is a lot of information given, and I don't want to keep going because I can do this for a while. So I'm going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I can ramble for a minute because I was like slowly looking at every detail, all the con all the things she was talking about. I would pause it and think about it, um, perspective of, of who was seeing it and how it's not right. So this is the man. How many times have we actually seen the Nibelheim flashback sequence done? We've seen it, of course, in the original. We've seen it in Crisis Core. We saw it in the anime. Uh, you know, we it, it, we've seen it so many different ways, in so many different variations. Uh, and what I mean by that is by different. It, it, the all, all the happenings are the same, but in each in each one you get more elaborate uh, design. You get. You know, Crisis Core didn't really expand the size of the town, but it did move the Shinra Manor a little bit away from the town. I mean, it was less condensed. Man, I love what they did with Nibelheim. With, I in, know. In the overall sense of, like, design structure. I, I love what they did with it. They expanded it. They added buildings. They they added, uh, uh, like, a big cathedral, you know, like, uh, like a church. The town hall is massive. Yep, yep, like, yep. In, uh, and then... Like one little thing they talk about like how this town stays afloat mm -hmm. there's only one way it stays afloat the um the overall design of the town really really impressed me the 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 details in the animation of, of the NPCs and and I, and I know that's like something that I don't ever really say uh, impressed me too much in a video game, but I paid attention to it because when you're when you're working at a studio and doing like, hey, I animated this little kid over here hopping around, it, like somebody animated that, somebody spent work and time doing that, and I just want to give a shout out that they've they've made like they made Nibelheim feel lived in. Yes, and not an empty ghost town, and that is something that I love the original game. But the original game feels a bit empty, especially now that we've seen like the remake, and now what we've seen of Rebirth, and it's going to expand and ma basically paint these games as pictures as we as we envisioned them, because the original looks like this in our minds and our nostalgia brain of how the story unfolds. It's way more epic because our brains fill in the gaps of our letting our imagination like embellish this. And we're don't, we don't, we're here soon. We don't have to do that with the Swiss. And that, that's, what's cool as being a fan of the original and seeing this stuff get reanimated and get to see it. And it's what makes it emotional uh, as well, because you've made an emotional attachment to a property or something that is now like it, like your brain painted that picture, and now they're like, "Hey, let us do that part for you." And you're like, "Wow, that's what you guys thought it looked like because it looks better than what I thought." You know, that case in point, uh, Aerith's house in the remake, or just looking up when you're under when you're underneath Midgard to see, and, and then the plates above you. I, I love that. Here, um, it was the mountains. Oh my God. It was it was the overall design of the terrain and how they captured that design and it's something that the FF, the original FF seven had a lot of variable locales, a lot of different kinds of places, deserts, uh, more mossy places, more uh, you had more colorful bribery. You know the Japanese influence with Wu Tai and. And, and gold saucer, and then Corel, the op, you know, glam and glitz next to complete ruin, you know, uh, you know, the resort town, and uh, it's like all of these different, all these really different, cool and different, unique things. And Mount Nibble is right up there with it. It's very, it's got a character of, of its own, and they were able to encapsulate that into something that went, it, it, it was mesmerizing to go through that section. Did you like? Did you stop and do the uh, ocean view? Mm -hmm. I stopped and stood there, like Joanna was behind me, and I just did the pan, the very slow pan in a big circle, just looking at the environment. Every time we went into a new area, I stopped, I did a spin, and checked all the detail. It 
it looks phenomenal. It's phenomenal. What do you think? Uh, let me see if I can phrase this the right way. Because I absolutely loved it. The nuance at, at which they they did the music. <laughs> and what I mean by that, and I've already told you about this, what did you think of how they weaved that in with the main theme? That you know, it's it's, it's kind of what they did within the last game, where you're like you would have the reactor theme, but they would have a battle version of the reactor theme. They they had the Nibelheim theme. They had a battle version of the Nibelheim theme. Mm-hmm. In the very beginning, when you, when he's talking about the flashback and he's on the he's on, he's on the truck doing his squats, Sephiroth tells him to calm down, and you know, and they're talking. And then they encounter the dragon. In the original one, it was a dragon. This one, it was two smaller dragons, but whatever. Cloud gets pushed aside. Sephiroth saves the day and cut and cuts them down. When he does that, it plays the Sephiroth little organ uh, a chant type deal, but it's more major. It's more heroic sounding. It's and it, of course his okay. demeanor. Of course his demeanor is completely different too. Until a you know until later on, uh, he seems very genuine. Yes. Like he seems like the vet. Like he like when you go into battle, like he's just watching, you know, Cloud in this mm-hmm. and or Zach being all freaking jittery and all the things. He's like, you just just stifle it. Calm down, like it's not that big of a deal. Just relax. Him sitting there with his legs crossed. Just mm-hmm. very proper. Like like this. He just sitting there like kinda and just listening and he's smiling like he's He's like the, the he's just observing yeah. the environment around him and he's smiling. And then um it's the way that the interaction about how like Sephiroth says, Aren't you from here? Mm-hmm. Aren't you from Nibble? And it's like, but that's not what happened. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like yeah. yeah. So I hate to say it like that, but but I, I'm I'm diverging, but it was just wonderful to see it. And how well it played out in this version of it. Yes, they def like well okay, so when I said before that we've seen this play out before, we have only ever seen this play out in this way in this from Cloud's flashback perspective one other time, and that was in the original game. When we played Crisis Core, we played the original unaltered events of that the actual true events that that do get revealed to you in the original game. And then of course the anime is the same way. No, in this one it was the it was the cool little subtle things that they put in there, like the way Cloud acts, like you said, his facial animation and the way his eyes move, his his body language, uh, and uh, then of course the little like subtle hints of per- of perspective switch for the big twist that he's there and he's that guard, mm-hmm. so he knows all this stuff. But then Zach is the other character who is there, who is in in the main timeline of, of events, dies getting him back to Midgar. In right. in Cloud's complete catatonic state of Mako poisoning, he passes on his essence onto Cloud, and Cloud adopts as a means of trying to repair himself and his own psyche. They blend together into become one false hood of a person that is mm-hmm. fake Cloud. Well, let's call him fake Cloud because that's the majority of original game. He's this fake representation of Cloud and Zack mixed into a person. And then real clouds like the this little like teenager that never got a chance to be anybody because he's been in a comatose state forever since that since since the Nibelheim incident. It and then you have the other cloud that's going to be later on. It's like the the Genova pervert part of cloud that pulls him closer to Sephiroth. Yeah, so. And this to see that all that stuff kind of come to fruition was awesome. The other thing that I really liked was the the huddles the the subtle hints, not the huddle sense, but the subtle hints that Cloud is the infantryman with when they're when when Tifa is leading them through Mount Nibble and they kind of get jumped and the infantryman saves Tifa and then allows uh Zack to finish off the monsters. 
and Sephiroth says and tells the infantryman, "Good job." But when, if it weren't for you, like we uh, like we would have lost our guide. Yep. I like the way the infantryman never says a word. Never says a word. But like you can tell. So like I don't know if you did this, but right when we stop, when you start Nibelheim, and you're Cloud walking through, the first thing I did is turn to the right and talk to Cloud. I talked to the infantryman that he is. Yep. And he's like, so you, so you know, I got a girlfriend here or something. And it's like, and then the other guy's like, wow, huh, a lot bigger than I thought it was. You know, like it's been talked off. It's, it's the first reactor. It's not even supposed to be active. Mm -hmm. but I really like the small stuff when you talk to people. I really liked when you're in, when you go to, to the town hall and like everybody's chanting Sephiroth, 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 like everybody's in love with this man. And the little kid, he could, oh, are you a shoulder? You know, like it, they talk like it, they, whoever designed that section did such a good job of filling it and making it feel like a living and breathing town. I really enjoyed it a lot. It made me very happy to play through it and be like, okay, if you're doing the flashback like this, I'm fine with whatever you got to follow because you're gonna if you're doing it, you've got this much love for this, you're gonna have just as much love for the Temple of the Ancients. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> Notwithstanding, right? I mean Notwithstanding, yeah. Yeah, no. I they they expanded the nibble, the mountain nibble portion where, you know, you get to go through um a couple of sections. In the original it was a couple of like screens where you could get in, get into battles. Well, in the in the original game, you would get into battle as a level one versus Sephiroth's level fifty, and you but you could not control Sephiroth. You absolutely could not do anything with it. You could just sit there and be in awe of him and his mastered materia, while you just had like preemptive materia, and that was it. However, that preemptive materia comes in handy a little bit later on for Cloud. The irony is that's the only materia that Cloud had as an infantryman. Was yes. that he didn't have Zach's build. Uh, Zach, I guess, didn't tell him what all his what all his build was before beforehand because that preemptive one comes in handy. Uh, Mike, the the new game follows the same Mount Nibble pathway, but it elongates it. You get to now control Sephiroth. They decided, like, it would be kind of boring if you just controlled Cloud and Sephiroth just buzzed around attacking and killing everything before you had a chance to do anything, especially in the beginning of a game where you're trying to learn how to play the game. So as a gameplay story integration mechanic, what better way to awe the audience, all the player of how badass you can be, is by giving you essentially a god mode for the first 20 minutes or two hours of the game, not, not quite, but almost, and allow you to play as the most legendary soldier of all time and when you do, it feels so satisfying to just, you are mowing through everything at the speed of light. And it is fun. It is literally, fun. it is so much fun to play as him. Like he freaking, when you do his dodge attack, he teleports. Mm -hmm. So like you can literally like, um, in the game, like you build up, a, a all, all characters build up kind of like a limit or a command bar. And, uh, and his, he has two bars. He has a command bar. And then he has Sephiroth Bar, <laughs> where they, hey, my one attack, literally one of his attacks does the entire ensemble attack on freaking uh, operator mode or cloud. His thrust does more damage than that entire freaking attack that cloud does, which is really long, actually. And they really did a really good job. But essentially, when you, I don't think anybody ever said, no, I don't want to control Sethiroth when they say new party leader Sethiroth. Everybody was like, oh, mm -hmm. finally, what's this? When this game hits PC, there's going to be mods from the get go that allow you to play mm -hmm. Sephiroth for the whole game. No matter what's going on, your character is just going to bloop, and now you're Sephiroth. Until you get done with the battle. I would play that. I would play it just, but, it, you know, 
we don't know if they're going to expand any on this. Obviously, I don't think they will more mm -hmm. combat with Sethoroth other than this flashback. No. But right, he does have three of his three iconic attacks, and that's that's what matters. And the freaking team attack. Mm -hmm. What do you think of their expansion of, of like the synergy? Because we saw the the beginnings of that with the integrate DLC with Yuffie, where uh, her and her uh, cohort would team up to do moves, and now they've done it and they've expanded it to work for every member of the party, and they've made it a leveling up mechanic. What do you think of it, and how do you think that like they could expand upon it like after this, like because like if they're gonna if if they took the baseline and what they built with remake if you're asking me in my opinion i felt like what they're doing with this is like it, it, it takes what they did and just makes it even better it just polishes it to me in my opinion it, it basically takes the system that you had and sprinkle sugar on top of it yes because essentially you are still you know you still have your limit breaks by the way his limit breaks way overpowered at that point <laughs> like <laughs> Octa Slash. Yes, spoiler again. You get Octa Slash. Mm -hmm. And holy crap. Does it decimate everything? Like I got it twice for the boss. Mm -hmm. I didn't even use I didn't even use Cloud's limit break. I was like, I don't, I don't even care. You don't even matter. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're just an extra <laughs> at this point. Because that is one of my favorite characters, is the legendary hero. Obviously more from Crisis Core than he is the legendary hero. He is the powerhouse. And it's funny that in this one, you get to see his realization of I'm a monster. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not what I think I am. I'm essentially a monster. And then as he, as the story goes on, he embraces what he is. Yeah. Um, so those back to the synergy attacks. Sorry. You you have I, I want to say this before we forget it. So you have normal yes. synergy attacks, but then you have ultimate or bigger synergy attacks that you can do. So uh, underneath on your meter, you uh, you have like a couple of vertical bars, blue bars. Uh, uh, like I, I'm not sure if there's four or five of them, but there's a few of them under each one. And and how you unlock the bigger synergy attack, you have to do some of their other abilities, like cloud braver, focus thrust, triple slash. Big shot, whatever they are, you know. Each character has to do so many of them, five. And once you have all gotten that, then you now unlock the ability to do the ultimate synergy, which is a huge attack. And the back-to-back -back mode. Yes, so when I... There is a boss on the way to the reactor, and they've moved the Materia Keeper boss to here. I assume that... Maybe I'm wrong. I assume that when we go through the Nibelheim section in the main game we don't go up to Mount Nibble since we already have just done this part. They wouldn't just, I don't think they would have you just repeat that part to like run all the way up there and get there to do to, to, to in story do what there's because there's in the main game, you just go buy it. You don't actually just go in. You can go in there, but there's absolutely nothing to do in there. And I got the reactor. You actually, right are going through the mountains to go to to Rocket Town. There has been no indication that Rocket Town's even in this game. No. They could Only change see it. him just for a little bit. Right. Well, you know, that they've already said Wu Tai is not in this game. And when they did the big state of play, they they talked about all the regions that they're going to be focusing on. Rocket Town was not there. Neither was Fort no. Condor. No. And that would be, to me, a very smart idea. If you're going to try and select a few things to save for later, Wu Tai, you don't need it. There's too much going in, in into this story section. You don't need it. You can change the way they meet Sid. You know, you can uh, you 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 can uh, do other stuff with uh, Vincent and his side quest. See, the, the, you can put all this stuff into the third game. You know, like, right. and, and like you could put Rocket Town because if Sid is, is not going to be a playable character and is sort of just a transport guy, if he's going to end up being a playable character in the third game, boom, now you have a guaranteed, you can save his entire side quest for that. So, the one thing you think about is how long do you spend actually in Rocket Town the first time you go through there? 
You just you basically just come up, talk to Sid, he tells you his story, and then you move on. Yep. That's it. Yep. There's really nothing. There, there's no meat and potatoes there. There's nothing to do. There are like stuff, items, little chests hidden about blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. The region is a good place to grind. That's it. There is literally no story. Nothing other than Sid's mad because he can't go into space. That's it. So there's a boss fight there against Palmer, right? Right. So in the in that last story trailer, they did show Palmer in a mech, right? Okay, so in mm-hmm. this one, your boss fight's gonna have a mech, right? Well, if you on that freeze frame, if you pause it, in the background is Golden Saucer. So I think they moved the Palmer fight. I think so. And so if they're gonna have the Palmer fight in this game, they might move it and they might eliminate the Rocket Town part. Entirely because the rocket town only becomes important because Sid is from there. It's his rocket, and what and what do they do later on? They launch it into fucking space. So it, why would you do it now? Just just have him go tome later on, and then then you can do all kinds of stuff there, and then you can have the entire plot with that thing going up into space. Introduce Shara. You can kind of change that dynamic, make him less of a prick and of a like of an awful human being to her because he is absolutely terrible to her in the main game. Like she's wonderful. She's such a wonderful lady. It, that that is not going to fly if he treats her the way that he treated her in that main game. It will not go today with this audience and with uh, with where we are trying to portray people. You you can you can complicate their relationship without making him a total asshole. He could still be kind of an asshole. Um, especially when he finds out why he was grounded. Because it there's more to the story of those that play the game that know that it's not actually... There's there's more to the story. Uh, that's all I want to say, because it's... You you can make changes to his character and, and, and still keep the... Still, still keep tension without making him be a fucking misogynist. Right. Because he, he comes across as just like... He bosses this woman around. And she does everything for him because she owes him her life. And there's, I, I think the whole quest keep the main points the, uh, to the point where she is smarter than he is, and he just can't yeah. ad- admit it. But keep those points there, but not make it so awful. No, you can do going back. You can keep Wu Tai. You can keep the real Fort Condor. You can keep Rocket Town for later because those areas are not as important. You can put them into the third part where now you've. You're going to be introduced in Medeal. You're going to be in, that's another new place for for the third game. You got uh, like the Northern Crater and stuff like that. But then it you don't have to come back to all of these like to this big open world concept that they're doing here and just try to add places to make it bigger. You 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 can do a different overall design. Because uh, at some point in the third game, we're going to get the high wind. So the how are you going to put that? Like, but now, now, and now you've eliminated the need for big open world run runabout traversal when you've got a damn plane. So you're just gonna be like, ah, uh, are we gonna have? Uh, is this gonna be like FF16 style map design where you have like regions where you just like, yeah, drop me off here, and then the high wind drops you off, and then you can go roam for a while. It could be, but you still have, as he said before in his interviews trying to figure out how they're going to fight on the high wind. I think you're going to be uh, some of these weapons. I think the high wind is going to be a uh, integral part of, I think they're going to look at what 16 did with the Kaiju battles. And I think we are going to use summons against the weapons. The question is, is do you bring the summons into this one? Because you do have summons where obviously you do Ifrit, but there are a few that you get in this one. There's two very specific ones. You get Bahamut in this portion of the game. Yeah, so we got Bahamut in the first one, and this is like they're calling it Bahamut Risen. Yeah. But it's Neo Bahamut, you know. But so you do you get original Bahamut in this one? Because normally you would get these after Midgar. They, it was, yeah, they did that, be, and they changed the way that you get and where you get summons. 
Right. Uh, because you didn't get your first summon until after you left Vanguard in the original. So they right. they wanted to have there to be summons. And so they selected some of the big ones and said, here you go. And then now in this one, you got, you know, there you're getting Titan, Phoenix, Ramu, uh, Kajata, whatever that thing's called, uh, Neo Bahamut, and Alexander. They did show Phoenix, though. It, the, I thought I said Phoenix. Yeah. Well, no, they showed it in the trailer. Yes. I'm just saying, you, you said it. You said it. I'm just saying they, they did show it in the trailer. There's a few that, did, there's a few that they've show. left out. The, okay, so we're going to get Bahamut Zero, maybe? The next you, one? Well, you have you have Bahamut, you yeah. have Neo Bahamut, yeah. Bahamut Zero, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you have, <clears throat> not at this point. I mean, I'm trying to figure out what you have. You have the Chuk Chukaboo one, which you already have that one. They've already shown that one. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Ifrit, obviously Shiva, uh, Ramu, and I don't. I'm trying to think of the ones that you haven't said. Well, there's, um. Hades, Alexander, Odin, Odin, yeah. So I think Odin's in this one. Um, Typhon, which I guess is, uh, no, no, my, I'm getting my memory mixed up with another game. But Ghost Ty Train, Ghost Train's an eight, dude. Um, no, what's the one that you summon here? Is that H Hades? Is the one that does all ailments? Yeah. Yeah. Knights of the Round. Well, I didn't mention that one because you could only get that till the end of the game. I know. Um, Levi Probably, right. Leviathan is, but that is Wu Tai specific. Yeah. But I, but they did have Leviathan in uh, the original. It's gonna be interesting because they're bringing back Chadley. They're bringing back a, a few other characters. Mike, before, like, I want to get some more things about this damn uh, uh, flashback. I want to because we keep bouncing around to some other stuff about the main game, which is coming up in a few weeks. Mike. How did you feel about the presentation once they get into the reactor and there is the Sephiroth waking up? I actually enjoyed it because he walks in and he's and it says Genova. And there's pods and obviously there's a monster saves Cloud. And then he's like, go turn the valves off. The valve off. One valve. And in that small amount of time about three minutes, he puts two and two together. To a degree. Mm -hmm. And then he starts killing, destroying all this stuff. And he gets really mad. And then that's when he reveals, like, am I one of these monsters? Because he starts getting his Genova cells activated. Is how I figured it out. I pictured it because, like, he's just kind of reading the books and he's reading it from a different perspective. And then all of a sudden... He's he's it, it's the the switch has flipped and it, it, it's over. Mm -hmm. He's no longer is himself. I, I I really like how like you can see the moment that he just loses his humanity in his eyes. Yeah, uh, in where he just is now completely driven by this other mindset and plot. The I really loved their depiction of him in the library reading. It it, it is almost it's. Shot for shot, how it's always been in my head from the flashback of just how it shows him down there reading like a man possessed. Just a man possessed, just is the way they, they put it. And he's just obsessed with every facet and bit of information. All this stuff has been locked away from him. You know, this is like like this is like Hojo's little playground here, away from away from Shinra, where he can kind of plot and do stuff plot around without, without all these distractions and all these other people messing around with his work. And then um, in the main game, you know, uh, when Hojo is talking about stuff and Ho and Rufus is like, I never saw that report. And Hojo's like, it's up here because he doesn't want anybody else to have it. This information is, you know, valuable. And What's he say about Hojo's, um, the guy that Hojo trained, he's, he was a great man. Sephiroth. Yeah, yes. <laughs> like he literally says, you know, this guy was a great man, and he is not. He is the opposite. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's definitely hinted. I mean, and and, and really, like Hojo just stole. <laughs> like Hojo, like is he's not as smart as he thinks he is, and he is just. He was always just a, uh, an embarrassment next to next to Gast, 
And yes. with gas out of the picture, now now he is, you know, now now he's the smartest guy in the room, right? That, no, I I love that switch. I love the way the way that they they had the him not not cloud out and have him lose consciousness, and then the for him to go outside, and then the whole town's on fire, which makes more sense than than Sephiroth just being like out of my way. I'm gonna go talk to my mom and then leave, and then by the time you get outside, the whole place is on fire. It makes it makes a lot more sense that some time would pass in between the two instead of mere seconds. And it's what he's like, haha, like I planted C4 bombs all the way through that to town, and I blew them all up because I just went insane. No, there was some time he went out there and he started just killing everybody in his pathway. And legit, I I, I liked. The, the the reimagining of the scene. I did not like how long it takes for you to move. I know. That was a bit frustrating. And if they're okay, so if you play this demo, folks, it allow the main game allows you to skip this portion of the game. I, I assume that we will start FF seven rebirth. We will get to calm. We will get to the hotel where then we can have the flashback scene. And then we can skip it. We don't have to play that part. We can just be like, and that's a wrap, you know? Or they started out after. I know. I heard that you actually get to calm. Okay, okay. And there, you, you can kind of walk around, and then you go up there, but you'll be able to skip this part. It, it, the only reason why I won't play the damn thing again is so I don't have to walk through down Nibelheim with a bum leg because it took forever to get places. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, My man, goodness. the game is like, no, you're not allowed to save your mom. You're only allowed right. to walk at half the speed of snail. It's just, from when I listen to it, just the way that it sounded and the way that it talks, it's like, uh, you notice there are a lot of wrong stuff mm-hmm. to Cloud's version of the Nibelheim event. And I really like that there's a lot you could just like like you said, like she's screaming right next to you. And he's like, Mom, I gotta go get my mom. But she's yelling, My son's still in there. I don't know if that's a different person. I thought it said Cloud's mom. I didn't see it. I'm gonna have to look. Yeah, I I did not see that because the way that they okay, so in the in the game, as he's like limping along very slowly, like Sylvester Stallone crawling through the jungle. It's he gets to where he's like, My mom's house and the vision, the perspective shifts. I kind of said this earlier, where it's like all of a sudden he's wearing different gloves and it you can see that the where his perspective is actually not at the same eye level. He's further on the ground, like he's laying on the ground, and that's because the soldier's laying on the ground, and that's actually Cloud. And but they're both looking at the house, saying, "Oh, that's my house." Well, and then my mom, and then as you walk up to the house, the the soldier says, "Ma," and then it goes to Cloud saying, "Mom, my mom." Yeah. yeah. And, you know, she, uh, I think the in the even the main game, uh, the original made it seem like that she dies inside the house on fire. And that cloud couldn't get to her. Uh, and that. Maybe that's what it is, but it sounded like... It is, the way that it sounded, I thought it said... Maybe it was just like he was saying Claudia. Because it says the name's Claudia. Or the woman saying something. Hmm. So, But anyways, I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. I, it went through it and there was a lot going on. Uh, dude, there is a lot going on. They they did a full-blown scene of... I had to replay it. Of Sephiroth too. killing the mayor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the three dudes... Whereas, like, they actually establish who these characters are, and uh, and whereas in the original, he just kills a couple dudes before they show the big scene in the flames. That that iconic shot, Mike. What'd you think? Oh, it was fantastic looking. Fantastic looking. I love the way that, like, literally, they end it at the iconic shot. Yep. Like it's literally like he fades past the flames. And yep. It's over. Yep, t- you know. it looks a lot better. Oh man, it looks sharp. I, I love the way they show his movement of his sword. Like they show the sword, and then one of the things he said, maybe you should talk to your sword before we fight. He, that one part, that, he's like, maybe you should kiss, whisper to your sword, or kiss your sword, or something like that. 
Well, if you remember, Angel never used the sword in Crisis Core. Zack would always hold it and talk about his honor, mm-hmm. you know, as a nod to Angel. Right. So him saying that to Cloud was a is a blatant that was he's talking to Zack. Because when yeah. has Zach ever said anything to his damn sword? He hasn't. Nope. That was nope. a Zach thing. And no, that was a great, obvious, like, bam. Like, if, if you know it, you get it. But like, but if he says it and you don't know it, you're just be like, okay, like, what does that mean? And then, but they just, they put you right into the fight from the get-go and you just kind of forget about it. Yeah. But that was a, uh, that was a nice little uh, quip that I also caught. There's a lot of really good small moments. Mm-hmm. There's also moments where, like, when you're playing as Cloud, he acts like Cloud. Like when it's alone and it's not a, he's not around anyone. Yes, I suppose he's Cloud. But then when he's around, you know, Tifa, like, why doesn't Tifa acknowledge that he knows where to go? Or like, I'm glad we used her instead of you because we were going to use you. Mm-hmm. Did you do that? Did you go past the rock slide? Yeah. Go to the rock slide and say, "Hey, it's down here." Yep. That that went away, and then it said, "I was like, yeah, we were gonna use you." Right. There's a guy. You would have drove us right off a cliff. Yep. Like, did you like the way that, like, obviously this is cloud, uh, you know, cosplaying as Zach, but just the way that they kind of talked to each other and kind of had this camaraderie with each other, and yeah. and the way that they kind of like the way Severoth kind of like made little. Made made little quips and jokes at him. Yes, I really like that. But also in in the other game in uh, Crisis Core, like in these small amount of time, like you see, you know, Genesis and Angeal and Sephiroth, the three legendary heroes here, interact with each other. It's that way. Yes, yes, it's exactly that way. So like to pull it apart and like Sephiroth still Sephiroth, but you know, Angeal and Genesis are not here anymore. <clears throat> right quotations around that not here anymore we don't know what's going to happen in this game no i i like the little um you know when he's like ah just just I'll, like i'll like i'll go ahead and, and like and like clear the path just leave everything to me except so i was like you bet <laughs> <laughs> you bet you want to just go for it <laughs> and then when he steps in for the one he's like consider this your evaluation mm-hmm. oh no and then it's, it's like great holy crap this is no longer an evaluation like oh and when the 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 uh the material keeper lashes out and he he has the small sense in the back of his head of he's on a whole other level like there's nobody on his level how fast and how good he is i don't know i really enjoyed it i'm definitely gonna play through it again i definitely there's a lot of stuff like that one scene that happens so fast because you're just you're kind of walking along mm-hmm. and the sentence is really quick but i'm pretty sure it said claudia so i'll have to look obviously she dies in this well it, it makes me wonder if like as you because as you're walking along something falls and it blocks your path i'm wondering if they did not actually have her say something and yelling like from inside the house like she's stuck she can't get out and Maybe, then, and I just... And, and then they have... Because they have all the characters who are saying something, all their lines come up on the side, like, pretty fast. But it comes up and, like... Yes. It's not like you can segregate... If you've got, section. like, three people around you, they're all three popping up. Yeah. And maybe they have her yelling something in the distance, and so then you got to slowly limp along around the, the item store, or whatever that store is, in order to get around to try and get inside the house. Um... Yeah, no, this thing is worth it. I'm so excited to see what they do with the main game. They are now, if you played and beat this on the 21st, Mike, they are going to release the Junon portion of the demo, and it is going to differ slightly. And the only reason why I want to play it is that I want to get to just fool around with some of the synergy attacks with the other people because they are making it to where you can carry your save forward, um, into the main game, as I said, you'll be able to skip the flashback portion entirely. Um, and then you're going to get a few, uh, some, you're going to get a Moogle charm, which says it's a accessory that you can get to boost your, uh, rewards. So like maybe some extra items you'll get or a higher chance for stuff to drop 
in battle you get some extra and, and then you'll get some extra items to kind of boost you off for when you start your journey so you don't have to spend all your money on some potions and shit so um i will i, I will be playing uh that demo i might not be playing it that day uh depends on what time i can get to it but mike you and i on the 22nd we got another date at the theater 21st buddy 21st is it the same day it's do, do I, so the same day that the demo comes out, we won't. I won't be playing that. We, you won't. You won't be playing it because we're going to be at the theater watching Advent Children. It comes out in theaters, and a English version twenty first, second uh, Japanese version twenty second. Exactly. We got tickets for the English version. We're going to go see that sucker. It's the complete Blu Ray version uh, that has the the added scenes. It's like over almost two and a half hours long, and. I'm pretty excited to go see this movie in theaters because I was super, super hyped for it when it first came out, and I was su- like, I was so hyped for it that I couldn't wait for the release over here. And I might have uh, downloaded it with some. Well, it, it 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 would be the most nostalgic would be to go see it in Japanese with subtitles because that's how I watched it the first time, I guess. As I I, I remember uh, using it allegedly on some sort of software that you can do to download mm-hmm. these things on the line. And, no, 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 we don't do that. No, 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 we don't do that right here. And I know that I think it had been out for a few months, but I finally downloaded it. It was on New Year's Eve, two thousand five, and I was playing in a band at the time, and we had a New Year's Eve show, and we played the show. And instead of hanging out into the wee hours of the morning, drinking and having all that sorts of fun, I we, after we finished the show, I hung out for a little bit with some friends, and then I s- said my farewells. And was back at the house just after midnight and had my own little solo after party with my computer and my rec- my newly downloaded Advent Children. And I sat there and I watched it twice. I watched I watched it once just in awe. And then I made myself some dinner and I sat down and rewatched it so I could see all the stuff that I missed because I was too busy reading the whole damn thing. Uh, no, Mike, I'm yeah, super sure. excited to go see Advent Children and... Uh, why do I'm they want us to go see with you? Why do they want us to know this stuff before this game comes out? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm saying that they're going to be like, "Hey, here's what happens at Advent Children," and then there's going to be a little thing at the end where you're going to see the little static come up, and when Seth Ross says, "I will never just be a memory," you're going to see the feather drop, and there's going to be a change. It's going to show a change. Telling you they're going to show a small change. It's probably only going to be like a, a one and a half minute scene. There's going to be a change. I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting. I'm excited. Why would you release it? Why would you do it again? Other than one, it's never been released in theaters in the United States. Mm-hmm. And I can recall. Do you recall it ever being there? Not offhand. Maybe, but no. I, I, I don't remember it being in theaters over here. At least around us, definitely not where we grew up. That yeah. was never a thing, <laughs> right? But I think it's it's funny because they're just like, "Hey, here's the movie. Just here's the movie. Mm-hmm. Well, why are you releasing this now? Yep. Well, it's the movie. Okay. Well, so most of us own it, like the version. Yeah, but you want to watch this version. Well, why? Just go watch this version because I think I have the complete version. Yes. 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 Um, also, Mike, they they could have released this at any point over the last several years, but they waited until about a year, year, year and a half ago to release the PS5, PS4, Switch, and Xbox version. It's of the remaster of Crisis Core. So I'm ready to be shamed. I still don't own it. Um, I just saw it on sale um, somewhere for like half off. It's thirty four dollars on uh, PlayStation. Yep, I, I I think it is also on Switch as well. Now, they have redubbed all the voices in this, Mike. I don't know if you know that. I don't know nothing about it because I haven't, least, wa- I haven't played it. At least some of them, they because they've made the Zach voice the same as the remake, and I think Sephiroth is as well. So, because the original Crisis Core had the Advent Children era voices. Yes, because they did the voices for the characters for Advent Children, Dirge of Cerberus, Crisis Core, and then the Kingdom Hearts uh, uh, two and beyond. They uh, the, they use the Crisis Core cast. Do you think that they'll have the new voice actors doing the voices in 
the movie? If I had to bet, no. I, I'm assuming no, but I honestly would be really excited for that. Because the guy who plays Barrett, oh, yeah. he nails it. Oh, yeah, he, no. he nails it. I just don't know if they want to put that much money into it to re-release it, and it'd be, because you would just be, you 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 would just be doing a new voice dub for it to match. I mean, to have continuity is one thing, yes, but I don't think they want to spend any money on it. <laughs> to be honest with you, they just want to be able to to screen it and be like, hey, how much money did we make off this screening? Okay, cool, that's the money we could put in the pocket. That's I, my. That's what I assume. That's my bet. Uh, I'm hoping that there's a pocket of new information. They, when asked about it, about the release of Crisis Core, they're like, "Do you absolutely need to play Crisis Core before you play Remake?" And they said, "No." And they're always very kind of sheepish. They like we designed Remake and Rebirth. There were even if you didn't play any other entry before you pick this one up, you can enjoy it. But they then then they come back to say, obviously, if you have played and or watched any of the previous entries in the series, you will uh, you will enjoy it more. Right. But it they they're always very they're always just very little like they're very tongue in cheek about the stuff that they want you to know and, and what they don't want you to know. And I I think they 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 chose in between remake and rebirth to release Crisis Core for a reason. Because they want you to be aware, because Cisne is in that trailer, uh, and and at the end of Crisis Core, Cisne ends up sticking around Gaganga and <laughs> saying that I'm gonna look after Zach's parents. So, why did they? I mean, what they what uh, they are bringing these elements into the story to make it a more rounded story? Because in the original game, we didn't have Crisis Core, you didn't have Advent Children, you didn't have all this stuff they added to it. Now they're all this stuff is going to be in the same place, and it's all it all exists, and except for this new part of the story that we still haven't really told you how it works, and uh, <laughs> but obviously we're going to find out, Mike. As I said before, when I beat remake and we were talking about it, I was excited, but as the week started ha- kind of turning over quicker and games were getting closer in this demo, the excitement has now turned into hype. And I'm very glad that I have taken time off to play it. And unfortunately, with your move, you won't be able to play it. But I promise you, I will not spoil a damn thing. It's going to be hard because I'm going it, to, it, it will be damn near impossible. I am hoping. So I am, we're, we're going to move. So we move. We're packing the whole house up literally the day. Like it's going into my shipping container the day after this release. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to get it. Everything's going to already be packed into my freaking uh, U pack. And I'm going to be sitting here holding a cellophane game that I want to play and just staring at it going, I have to be an adult. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be an adult for the next two weeks. And I don't want to be an adult. Adulting does suck, and uh, sometimes we have to do what we have to do. And unfortunately, what we have to do is in this episode of the podcast here, because uh, there's not much else to talk about until the next portion of the demo comes out. Until we've, that's a week from the game coming out almost for, to the day. So we'll be like right on the hype train, ready to go. I've got the week off after that to play through it. I have decided not to record it this time for my first playthrough. Last time I went through all that and did it. I am not going to do that this time. I might eventually record a playthrough of it, but I'm not going to do it now. But see, I've decided to not do that because uh, my life has kind of changed since then, and there might be periods where I, I've already said, I've already made my own space, got a new monitor and prepare preparation. I'm ready to play this game, and I'm ready to play this game without interruptions. But as a responsible person, I cannot be 100% unavailable in case of emergency break glass. And we're going to be breaking glass here on this episode of the podcast. Mike, thank you once again for joining me. Always. Episode 180 for real this time. As we get on the hype train for Rebirth, we are excited. We hope you are too. What's going on with Xbox? We're not too sure either. We're going to find out this week. And uh, we are going to try and come back at you again soon. We're not really too sure when. I am going to save the Rebirth review conversation for after you have beaten it. Because I... I want to do the same thing that we did last time where we get together and break it down. That will be a bit 
out of the way, but I don't mind waiting for it because it'll be worth it. I am going to try. Um, like I said, everything will be up there. I am when I come back to obviously the house sell and everything like that. I think I'm only bringing the laptop um, and clothes. Mm -hmm. So there might be a thing where you're, if you're like, okay, we need to talk about this. And we'll have to talk about like me maybe keeping a my other TV here or something. Oh, wait, I don't have it. Never mind. <laughs> I can't keep a monitor unless I want to play it on my little itty bitty one. <laughs> and you, that, which that, I don't. That's not the first way that you want to experience the game. So. No. So yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that I can play it while I'm there. Like, I think she'll, like, once we get everything kind of moved, I might try to just go through it at least finish the game, mm -hmm. but not do everything and then turn around and come back, obviously, and do everything because, you know, Anyway. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm more than willing to wait to have the big conversation review because I feel like it would be more entertaining and more advantageous. And I'm worth it. You'll wait because yes, I'm worth it. yes, you are. You are worth it, and uh, we are worth it here uh, as well <laughs> on the Game Addicts podcast. Again, we've switched over. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple, Amazon, and YouTube. You can check out the podcast on YouTube, the video version where we try to struggle uh, to get a video version up. And uh, uh, and at, at, at the behest of, of of equipment, my stuff. I tell you what, I don't mess with it often enough sometimes. And when I get back to it, everything's all messed up, and I got to figure it out all over again. Isn't that life, though? Isn't that life? Hopefully, in my next house, I'll have a good setup. Um, it's not you. It's not you. It's me. I mean, granted. Well, I mean, well, this is all you can see of me. Well, and, and those that can't see, I'm showing half my face because I don't have a light set up to show my face. I don't have a ring or any type of light in front of me. I only have my sunlight, which is fading. Currently. Sunlight is fading on us here on the show, and we are dipping away. But we're on all those socials. We're back here for this episode, 180 for real this time, and uh, we're, we're going to be back at you again soon. Mike cannot be by, back with us for a few, for a few, but I'm going to try and keep it going every other week here on the podcast it's just to try to keep it going, even if it's just myself here talking about the news, Mike. I want to do some of the stuff, too. So okay. I want to do like uh, Xbox News uh, yeah. next week, not not the seventeenth. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, you know why? Um, and then I definitely want to do our experience. If anything changes for um, the uh, movie, uh, just because you know, mm -hmm. I I'm hopeful. I I'm sure it's not, but you know, but anything like that. Uh, the only thing that's going to be hard for you is is when I come back and I haven't played it. And if we do a podcast from there, you're going to literally be there like, you need to play the game. Oh, man. That's, I know. <laughs> that's why I'm saying it's going to be next to impossible, especially if I know all the beats and have just been digesting it by myself for so long. It's going to be difficult, but, we're, but we will manage, and we hope you guys will manage too until we can grace your ears and eyes once again here on the Game Addicts Podcast. I've been Brando. And I have been Mike. And we'll see you later, guys. Game on. <laughs>